in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, choir. More grace, more strength in the name of Jesus Christ. You will still please stand and join me to worship this God because I am one of the evidences of the power of his resurrection. That I'm alive and I'm standing in the front of you today is an evidence that indeed the power of resurrection is at work and it will continue to work. So I want us to worship him. If you don't have any reason, please just join me to worship him. Let's worship him. Oh, he's our help in ages past. It's our hope for years to come. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we most blessed, most glorious. Glorious the ancient of this almighty victorious thy great name we pray. one more time, one more time, most blessed, most glorious, most blessed, most glorious. You are the glorious God. Father, we are very grateful unto you. It has pleased you, O God, to keep us aligned and to keep us in health. Lord, we are here today celebrating that victory that you won for us. 
through the death and resurrection of your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mighty God, we pray. As we share your word together, Lord, grant us understanding of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I surrender all and I pray have your way in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your word in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Thank you. Please be seated. And I'd like to start by wishing you all happy Easter celebration. I pray this will not be your last. This will not be my last in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to celebrate many more Easter in good health, the Lord will grant unto us in Jesus' name. Father, unto you will return glory, honor, and majesty. Because indeed you are good, and your mercies endure it forever. The theme for this service, which is the theme for this sermon, is the difference its resurrection makes. The difference its resurrection makes. And our leading scripture, the text, is taken from the epistle for this service, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. It says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. One translation says we are of all men the most miserable. That is KJV. KJV. Of all men the most miserable. But thank God we are of all men full of glory, hope in eternal life. To God be the glory forever in the mighty name of Jesus. But we want to look at the difference His resurrection makes in our lives, individually, and in the life of the church and the world around us. You all remember that in some years past, whenever it was said, that there will be a presidential broadcast that the president will address the nation. People will be attentive, willing to hear new things from the president. But gradually, the interest began to wane. Today, many people don't care again. But is that their fault? They don't care about such address because they cannot see the difference it makes year in, year out. One pledge or the other. But because those addresses were not making difference in the life of the people, people lost interest. And if we bring that to Christianity and spiritual life, if our preachings are not back with actions, then Christ's resurrection does not make any difference. If all we do is to celebrate our title, is to be to build big cathedral without Christ like character, then the noise about resurrection will not make any impact in the life of the people. And that is what we want to look at today. We know its resurrection made a lot of difference in the world. It changed nearly everything about the world. But what has changed in your life? What has changed in my life? And I want us to look at one of the epistles of Paul. It's epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3, 
from verse 1. Colossians 3 from verse 1. It says, If then ye were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is a mystery. But I pray God will grant us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ should make a lot of difference in our life. And this passage is pointing our attention to those differences it ought to make in our life. He said, if then ye were raised with Christ. How many of us have been raised with Christ? We don't understand. Praise the Lord. That is one of the differences his resurrection should make in our life. That though you are alive, but spiritually you have risen with Christ. Yes, I can be seen physically, but the weapon of my warfare, they are not carnal. So don't, could you do me? Praise the Lord. Don't just say, say hey, he does this young man. No, you may be making mistakes. Though. We have said it before. That look, if you are oppressing somebody who is in Christ, you are risking your life. Because the day the host of heaven decide to execute judgment on his behalf, you will regret to eternally. Apostle Paul says, yes, we are alive. We, you can see us physically. We are little by size. We might not be as educated as you are. He said, but the weapon of our warfare... They are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold because we are risen with him. We are not operating based on what is around us. His resurrection should make that different in your life. But if you are still afraid of everything around you, that means Christ's resurrection is nothing in you. And I pray God will grant us that understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, if indeed you were raised spiritually, say, seek those things, which means his resurrection should change the mode of our thinking. That is it. If before all you think about is what you can achieve here on earth, the moment you are in Christ, and you acknowledge the fact that you have been raised with him. He says, set your mind on where? Things above. That is how we should be living. That's the only way by which we can show the world around us that his resurrection has made a lot of difference in our life. Set your mind on things above. Say, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died. Eh? You died. How many of us have died before? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, let's see Galatians chapter. I think it's Galatians 2.20. Let's see what it means to die. Because if you have not died once, you won't Resurrect with Christ. Galatians 2.20 Can we read it together please? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the testimony of someone in whose life the resurrection of Christ has made a lot of difference. Say, yes, you know me. You know my background. Say, but I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. 
Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. How many of us can boldly say that Christ liveth in me? Praise the Lord. If Christ liveth in you, you will not be afraid. Even of death, you will not be afraid. And we must get our Christianity to that point. That is how we can demonstrate that indeed we understand what it means for Christ to have risen from death. He said, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the Lord. I want us to read further that collusion. And I continue from verse 5. He said, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. If anyone is still found in this, that person has no evidence of Christ's resurrection. That is what the scripture is telling us. But in verse 8, he said, But now you yourself are to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, vile language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. The old man has been crucified with Christ. But if you still go around with the old man, with the nature of the old man, there is still anger in you. That does not belong to Christ. Though. You still lie. Eh? Believers, lying should not be part of our life. It should not. Anger should not be part of our life. Wrath, malice, all this belong to old nature. And if indeed we are celebrating his resurrection and we don't want it to be empty celebration, all this must be found in our life. One other thing that is the difference that his resurrection made in our life is that it reduces death to mere transition to a place of rest which is resurrection. We have that boldness now to say that my life does not end in my grave. Abby? Yes. The worst the enemy can do is to kill. But my life does not end in the grave. They did it to Christ. The worst they could do was to kill him. They even have they buried him. But the life did not end in the grave. He resurrected. And he gave us that hope that look, death is nothing but transition to a place of rest. And I pray that is what it, it will be for each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's confirm that with one scripture. Let's turn our Bible to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, verse 13. And let's see what the scripture says. He said, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. So when they die, what do they do? They rest from their labors. They rest from their labor. That is one of the difference that is resurrection make. And that is why today we can boldly confront death and despise death. And that's why we always sing, Iku Oro Reda. Ishaku Ishegu Reda. That victory has been taken over by Christ. And the victory has been handed over unto us. And I pray we will not lose that victory 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One other difference that his resurrection made is that he brought diverse gifts to the church. And let's see Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 7. It's a popular scripture I read to remind us. Ephesians 4 from 7. He said, but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gift to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower part of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might feed all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. When he ascended, he gave us all these gifts. I don't know if you have evidence of this gift in your own life. Because he says, he gave to us. He said, but to each one of us, grace was given. Each one of us. So if you are not manifesting any of this, you need to pray today. Because that will be an evidence that indeed, you are benefiting from his resurrection. And I pray, as you ask, the Lord will grant you your heart desires in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ's resurrection translates the teaching on resurrection of the dead from the realm of letters to the realm of personal reality. Before it was all teaching, there will be resurrection, and people began to doubt. Even the disciples, that was why they were worried, because the scripture says they did not know yet that he was to rise. So he used to be teaching story, hope that this thing will happen. But when he resurrected, he took that from the realm of ordinary doctrine, he took it from the realm of letters, and brought it to the realm of personal reality. John chapter 20. I want us to see that from John chapter 20, the testimony of one of the followers of Christ. John 20, verses 26 to 28. So if Christ's resurrection is not yet your personal reality. You should pray about it now. See, and after eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Before he was not with them, now he was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach either thy finger. And behold my hands, and reach either thy hand, and trust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And let's see what Thomas said. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. That was the level of reality. To him, it was no longer an historical fact that he has risen. To him, it became a personal reality. And if he was to witness, he had evidence beyond story. Every one of us, before you can be a true witness, you must have evidence of his resurrection beyond mere story. You must have, a, have that encounter. You must have that experience to convince your listeners that indeed he is risen and he is alive and he will remain alive forever in the mighty name of Jesus. One of the difference that his resurrection made before this cross that now becomes symbol of victory used to 
to be symbol of shame, symbol of rejection. But now it has become symbol of victory for us. It's now something we admire. Something have, I mean, some, some people have crosses in their home. But before, it used to remind them of shame, rejection. But now, its resurrection has changed the whole story. And that's again why today, on Sunday, we can come together every Sunday to rejoice. It wasn't like that before. They were keeping Sabbath before its resurrection. But all these things will be of no effect if that difference is not manifesting in my life. If that difference is not manifesting in your life. We had that during the Bible study today. In what way are we reflecting that truly he is risen? Today, restoration means different things to different people. To marketers, it means more money. Abi, if you go to Bodija and you interview them, about let's say Easter, you see? Eh? In Kotomu Easter, do is more money to them. And Easter, I lay your chair, Jordan. Ah, Rero. That is all they care about. Eh? To chicken sellers. Abi, if you go around, you will see all of them around. It means more money. Some we maybe will have started preparing those birds, maybe by Christmas time, waiting for Easter to make more money. Praise the Lord. When we were much younger, all we cared about Easter would be rice and pepper. We tell you, chicken by but even with that, I If it about the rice by every rice to my little that was all we cared about. Our parents to buy like but only rice or do. I saw by rice or do for instance, I cannot do that so. But as children, all we cared for. During Easter, his resurrection meant nothing much than to rejoice, to eat. And up to today, we still have people in the church. Their own expectation, the reason for their celebration does not go beyond this world. It ought not to be. His resurrection should have made that difference in our life. His resurrection should unite our will with the will of God the Father. And that will happen when we change our mindset, when we change our focus from things here on earth to things above. So people of God, with all the Easter that we have celebrated together, how far have you gone in your relationship with God the Father? Today is another celebration, and I pray the grace of God will be sufficient for every one of us to look beyond now. To look beyond what you have. It's good to be blessed. But our life should not be attached to all these things that we can see. He said, if then ye have been raised with Christ. So every one of us, we are expected to live a resurrection line. Because Christianity is a religion of, of resurrection. On your baluman, that's a young one, Coco Legunia, you may want to read us a banyo. The Coco is jacking your do. But when you Coco Legunia, so Kulegua Bado, Castor or Cababe, only go talk. Abby, in our own faith. Resurrection is the pillar of our faith. Remove it and nothing again. So if you don't have the experience, if you cannot rejoice in it, if you cannot celebrate it, you have not started any Christian race. It is as serious as that. Because when you go out to witness 
and you are not backed up with the power of resurrection, you cannot go far. You cannot go far. If you don't have the experience, you cannot witness. You cannot witness. So today, just like Apostle Paul prayed, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I pray today that will be our desire. If Peter, I mean, if Paul could pray that kind of a prayer, then we need to pray that kind of a prayer. That God, I want to experience that power of resurrection. And I pray that as we open our heart unto him today, the Lord himself will reveal that power unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful unto you.